If you suffer from acid reflux or you have a hiatal hernia, you're likely on a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor, to diminish the amount of acid your stomach is producing with the thought that then, if, when the stomach refluxes its contents, it's not acidic, so you don't feel it and it's not damaging your esophagus. On the face of it, it's, that sounds pretty good. However, we really have to dive deeper because one, there are some very dangerous side effects of the PPIs, which I'll review toward the end of this video. But what I wanna focus on today is what happens when you decrease the acid in your stomach. Your body is an incredible machine and your stomach is designed to be a bag of acid. Its main job is pr to produce acid. So it doesn't go unnoticed by your stomach that acid is now really being suppressed. There is a hormone called gastrin and it is its job to produce adequate acid. So when the acid levels have really decreased, gastrin says, well, that's no good. Let's produce more acid. And you actually get increased levels of this hormone to accommodate that need for, we don't have enough, let's produce more, let's produce more, because that is its job, right? So everybody's trying to do their job. Um, the problem with this is that when you have these elevated gastrin levels, you will start producing more cells to accommodate the need to produce more acid. So your body, the cells that produce acid are called your parietal cells. And so as the hormone increases, it actually has the ability to have the body produce more cells. So again, from an external viewpoint, you go, that's really cool. The, the body has so many mechanisms to right wrongs. Because again, your body doesn't know that you're intentionally trying to decrease acid. It just, it notices an out point. It's like not enough acid being produced. My job to produce acid. I'm going to increase my levels, the hormone says, and I'm gonna increase the number of cells that are responsible for making acid. So that's called parietal cell hyperplasia. You're hyper, you're making more of them. As a result of that, what happens is if you try to get off your PPI, you now have such an abundance of these parietal cells that you truly will hyper secrete acid. So you try to wean down a little bit and uh, the body goes, oh good, you know, you've been suppressing me, suppressing me, suppressing me. Now I can really do my thing, but it's thing, right? It's now this new level of activation or activity is this higher hyper level. So now you get too, truly too much acid. Prior, you didn't have too much acid. You just had pressure on your stomach that was inappropriately then having the stomach sending acid up your esophagus, but you didn't have too much acid. The, the stomach acid was fine and normal. It's just that there was pressure and the stomach had no choice to, but to bring the acid up the esophagus. But this solution to decrease your acid sets you up to be a lifetime consumer of these PPIs, which again, have very dangerous side effects, which I will review in just a couple of minutes. So uh, I want you to appreciate what you're getting into. Now there's been uh, research I'll cite, uh, one was in 2009, uh, Raymer was uh, the group, uh, sorry, the individual and, and a group associated with him or her. And the title was Proton Pump Inhibitor Therapy induces acid-related symptoms in healthy volunteers after withdrawal. So they took healthy people with no reflux, they put them on a PPI, and then when they withdrew them, now they had symptoms of acid reflux due to this mechanism that I just cited. Another study in 1998 uh, found the title was uh, time course of gastric acid secretion 
and serum gastrin during long-term PPI management. However, they say long-term, but what they found was within days of being on a PPI, the gastrin levels increased and then continued to increase. So after uh, just 24 to 48 hours, they can find an increase in gastrin. After a week, it can be double. After two to four weeks of being on a PPI, you can be looking at three to six times your normal level of gastrin. And then after eight plus weeks, now you're getting into this parietal cell hyperplasia where you're literally making more parietal cells to make more and more acid. You try to cut that dosage and, and you're going to be truly miserable with, with the acid reflux and all the attendant symptoms that go with it. Now, I'm not citing this as bad news, so I hope you're, <laughs> hope you're all still listening because there, there is a solution for most people. I, I can't say for everyone, but for most people. Um, and it is, it is important to note that PPIs are only recommended by the Food and Drug Administration for two weeks at a time. Granted, they found some increases after two, uh, 24 to 48 hours, uh, but at the two-week mark, you're, you're definitely looking at an increase, but not to that eight-week-plus mark where now we have this increased number of parietal cells. Um, apparently, the FDA has now, uh, now has an insert you know, I don't know if you've seen the inserts on, on drugs, it's like font size two, it's very hard to read, but it, it now mentions rebound acid hypersecretion and hypergastrinemia, meaning, you know, increased levels of this hormone and the rebound acid hypersecretion, meaning you're now secre secreting way too much acid. Um, for long-term use, apparently, is what the insert says. But now we're finding long-term is not the literal years and decades that we meet patients who have been on their PPI, but, but literally a month or two and in, in you're getting into this arena. So what do you do? Ultimately, we want to get to the root cause of why all this started. What, what was that increased intra-abdominal pressure? The pressure being put upon your stomach that caused your stomach to have to bring the acid up your esophagus. It's different for different people, but it's not hard to figure out. So that's, that's number one to help normalize your gut function. Now there's a blood test you can do to see what level of gastrin you're producing. So we can see, are you at 2X, 4X, you know, what have you, how, how elevated is that? And when it gets into that really high elevation, then we know we're in the arena of this increased parietal cell number. So it's a very slow taper wean process, but it's not just about weaning, it's about supporting the gut and um, with we, we use herbs, we use other supplements, it's, it's a program that uh, my team has developed to help with this. Now, it's not going to work for everyone, that's, that's the sad part about it, it just depends on how your body has reacted, but due to the side effects, it's certainly well worth the effort to get off these drugs or at least minimize their use. So I've referred to the side effects several times now, so let's look at them. You get um, nutrient deficiency, so your ability to absorb uh, key minerals like magnesium, calcium, zinc, and iron are diminished due to being on a PPI. Your ability to absorb vitamin B12 is diminished due to being on a PPI. That leads to a lot of the side effects uh, that I'm about to speak to, which is osteoporosis. So if you're not absorbing your calcium and magnesium, you're more likely to get brittle bones. Kidney issues, heart issues, risk of stroke, and actually dying of a heart attack is associated with PPI use. Dementia is associated with PPI use. Anxiety, depression, 
mood swings, loss of libido. So on the hormonal spectrum, those are all associated with PPI use. Dementia is associated. And last but not least, stomach cancer. So we're talking a lot of these are life threatening conditions associated with PPI use. And now we have this sort of built in, let's keep you as a customer forever because you're not going to be able to wean off of this without a great deal of assistance. So um, I want you to know the risk. And again, I'm not trying to depress you. Uh, I read all the comments that, that you submit and sometimes people go, oh, great. Uh, you know, and so I, I don't want you to get into that. I, I never do a video, I never share information without a solution. I'm not gonna give you information, bad news that you can't do anything about. There is no point to that. So there, there, is, there are things you can do, right? There is hope for this. And you know, it's a program, we've gotta to get to know you, figure out how you got here and, and what the approach is, do some testing. So it's a process, it's not, oh, do this, you know, just stop it tomorrow, which you definitely don't wanna do. Um, it's not that, it's, it's a program, but well worth the effort because of the dangerous side effects. So I hope that all made sense and I explained it clearly. Uh, I, want, I want you to feel great. I don't want you to be taking a drug that has such adverse side effects that you're not even aware of, and most people aren't. So as an example, I've heard from a lot of people when I talked about the risk of dementia say, oh my gosh, I was on it for several months and I thought, now I have Alzheimer's and, and it was the medication and they were able to wean off and, and then their brain function was fine. You know, ditto for the brittle bones or the kidney, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of people don't know these side effects and aren't aware. Think of anxiety and depression. All of a sudden you're feeling anxious or you're feeling depressed. You, you don't know why. And because it takes several months, for those symptoms to develop, you don't necessarily think it could be the PPI that you started several months ago, unless you're, you know, hyper aware of what these problems can be. So um, I hope you found this informative. I feel very strongly about how dangerous this drug is, and really want to help people get off of it and really get to the root cause of why they got on it in the first place. So. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're really trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can be apprised of it, this information and get help. That's the way the algorithm works. Uh, also, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who you know has this problem so they can get help. And uh, as always, I appreciate you so much and we'll talk soon.